Find your place in Romans 8. I trust you've had a good week. Amen. It's been a busy week. I'm glad to be here this morning. Glad to see each of you. In Romans 8, we're going to be looking at verses uh, uh, 5 and following. If you'd follow along this morning with me, if you've got a Bible or be good listeners, it says in verse 5, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Father, thank you for your word. Uh, Lord, help us to be students of it. Help us to be good listeners this morning. Make applications to our lives. May, Lord, you do the teaching. May your word be special, Father, to the hearer. May, uh, Father, you keep the distractions to a minimum. May Jesus Christ, Father, have the chief seat. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, if you'll look with me back at verse 5, and uh, ask that if you would please this morning, focus by the grace of God on, on what we have, what the Lord has. It says in verse 5 here, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. And look with me in Psalm chapter 63, if you would please. Mining, uh, in verse 5 again, mind the things of the Spirit. If you're saved this morning, there ought to be a concern for what God would have you to be doing, thinking, listening, speaking. Uh, you ought to have a sensitivity to the working of the Holy Spirit in your life. Back in the book of Psalm, chapter 63, if you would please, 63 of Psalms. Uh, in verses uh, 1 and following of Psalm 63, says, O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is, to see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. When I remember thee upon my bed, meditate on thee in the night watches, because thou hast been my help. Therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul followeth hard after thee. Thy right hand upholdeth me. You're still in Psalm. Look with me in Psalm chapter 73. Psalm chapter 73, if you would please. Verse 25. Whom have I in heaven but thee? Amen. There is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. In verse 28. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. The book of, uh, if you would please, uh, John, the book of John. Please follow along, or at least be good listeners this morning. book of John, chapter 6. John chapter 6, reading verse 66. From that time many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Honestly, folks, is there any satisfaction? Now, think with me just for a second here. Is there really any satisfaction in anything outside of the Lord? Well, yeah, there is, Brother Doug. No, I'm talking about eternal satisfaction. I'm talking about a type of satisfaction that never is exhausted. It's always there. It's always a source for us. Have you thought about that? I like the way the words are put here. 
And it had to come from Peter, answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Wow, where else are we going to go? Amen. We're speaking about being focused on the spiritual today. Amen. We're speaking about Christian being focused on the spiritual. Look with me, if you would, please, in Matthew chapter 6. Matthew, back up to Matthew 6. In all the hubbub and excitement of life and the chaos of life. Folks, where else am I going to go for real satisfaction? Amen. Matthew chapter 6 and verse number 19. It's sometimes it's like God has to shake me and say, look, <laughs> that which you think is so neat isn't. Huh? You have closets full of neat stuff. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody moved lately? Admit it, right? What do you, what's the first thing you do when you move? What was that, brother? Throw stuff away. Have you sat in a pile of your stuff and go, why on earth do I still have this? Amen? But it was so near and dear to you 10 years ago. Amen? And just as you're throwing it, the watch says, no, 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 no. It's valuable. Right? Or vice versa. Right? Yeah. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. Yeah, you'd have to go to this, Brother Doug. It says, lay, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt, where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Eh, if you look with me in the book of Philippians, laying a little groundwork, Philippians chapter 3. <clears throat> Sometimes, like I say, it's like the Lord has to shake his people and say, enough. Amen. <laughs> Stop. Consider your ways. Amen. <laughs> huh? Amen. Yeah. In Philippians chapter 3, in verse 20. Philippians 3.20 tells us, For our conversation is in heaven. Oh, wait, wait really? That's what it says here. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able, even to subdue all things unto himself. Yeah, it's a priority issue this morning, isn't it, Christian? Colossians chapter 3. We have been blessed abundantly in America. We have been blessed abundantly. Amen? Uh, folks, you, there's a few out here this morning that probably maybe went through the Great Depression. Maybe. Amen? I got to hear about it growing up. And I got weary of hearing about it. But, you know, that was a very... <laughs> that was a very... Um, uh, how shall I put it? Uh, tough times for folks. And I, you know, you can listen and you can, okay, Grandpa, that was, that was, okay, wonder. We haven't had to do that. Amen? In fact, it's which rest, restaurant will we be eating at, eating at today? Amen? Right? Uh, in Colossians chapter 3, verse 1, it says, If ye then be risen with Christ, Christian, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection. Amen. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Why is that? For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. We're speaking of spiritual thinking this morning. A spiritual mindset. Speaking to the Christian this morning. Where are your affections this morning? If your mind's wandering to your job already, maybe your affection's misplaced. Amen? Think about it. If your mind's wandering around to other things, maybe your affections are misplaced. Maybe God has to remind each of us, I need to be your affection. Amen? I need to be your treasure. I'm a very present help in time of need, and you're going to need help. Amen? Amen. So in the midst of this country living today, and as well off as we have it today, it is a struggle 
Let me say, it is a struggle between the flesh and the spirit to keep things in proper priority. Is it not? Amen. Come on now, right? Is it not? I can be used of God to teach this lesson, and I'm struggling with it after church already. Well, come on, right? You get your, your affections properly placed by the grace of God, it's going to affect some things. And we've looked at this in the past, and I think it's worthy of looking at it again. One thing it's going to affect is how you view the Word of God. Brother Doug, what did you just say? How you view the Word of God. Is it a book of suggestions? Is it a matter of opinion? Or is it the Word of God? Look with me, if you would, please, in the book of 2 Timothy. Amen. We're speaking about spiritual mindset this morning, thinking spiritual things. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, you know these scriptures. God help us to make application. In verse 16 of 2 Timothy 3, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. Folks, you might underline that. And is profitable. Amen. For doctrine. For reproof. For correction. For instruction in righteousness. Why? That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Yes. That's Old and New Testament alike. Has it been a while since you've been in it? No, Brother Doug, I read, that, I read a couple weeks ago, a couple chapters, and I'm up to date and up to speed. Folks, I need the Word of God every day in my life. Amen. But Brother Doug, you don't know how busy I am. I can relate. Amen. Amen? You want personal strength in your life? Dads, get into the Word of God. Parents, you want strength in the home? Get into the Word of God. You need direction in your life at work? Get into the Word of God. Where are your affections at this morning? Amen. It's easy after a while. To... After it, it is. Amen. Is it not? It's a struggle daily. You get your affections on things above, not on things in the earth. It's going to affect how you view the Word of God. Because if you back up in 2 Timothy 2.15, it says, Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But it goes on to say, But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. I know I need to be in the Word of God. I know I need to study the Word of God. In case I don't know that, the Bible just told me, Study the Word of God. Amen? Because you're going to be tested. And what's the thing about tests, life's tests, that God allows to come our direction? It shows us how weak the flesh is and how much we need his help. Amen? Throughout the week, God would like to use each of us, whether at work, whether at college, whether at home, whether with the neighbors, to be a what? Salt and light, a witness, an ambassador for him. Amen? Yes, the more you're in the Word of God, the more God's able to use you. Don't look at the job as just marking time and putting food on the table. Look at the job as a ministry. Look at college as a ministry. It's all how you view things. If your affections are properly placed, you will view your job differently. You'll view going to school differently. You will view many things differently. How? With a spiritual mindset. Why did God give me this job? Huh. Who needs to be saved? Who needs to be encouraged? Amen. Who needs to be uplifted? Who needs to be edified? Who needs to be reached with the word of God? It's going to affect something else. So look with me Proverbs chapter 28. You can't be in the Word of God very long before, it's, before the Word of God starts knocking on your heart Amen. and saying, guess what? That which you've been comfortably doing, I don't like. Speaking of the Lord. Amen. And we need to have a little discussion about it. In Proverbs chapter 28, verse number 13, it says, He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. It doesn't take long when you're in the word of God, folks, amen, 
that God starts pointing some things out. And you know what I find interesting about it? is it takes my eyes off other folks and the issues I see with them. Amen. Amen. And God says, no, let's redirect the light to your light, to your closet for a little while. Amen. Remember that cleaning job you did, on, you thought you did on the closet of your life? Well, I brought uh, my cleaning crew in. Amen. We won't miss a corner or a shelf or the deepest part of that closet that you thought you had taken care of. See, when your affections are properly placed, there's a sensitivity not only for the need to be in the Word of God, but the need to draw close to God. And then with that sensitivity is the issues in your life that perhaps are separating you from a closer relationship to your Heavenly Father. In 1 John chapter 1, you know these verses. I'm going to read them anyway because they're great verses. In 1 John chapter 1, I like how the scripture is put here in 1 John 1. In verse 5 of first, no, of first, verse 4, it says, In these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Folks, let's stop right there just for a second. Let's have a reality check. Amen. If you're living in sin, quit kidding yourself. Amen? Quit kidding yourself. You're not in fellowship with God. Amen? But Brother Doug, I've learned to balance it. I try that once in a while myself. Amen? Uh, God's got a heavier hand. Amen. Doesn't work. Doesn't work too well. Amen. I've, I've I've learned to balance it. If we say that we have fellowship with Him, and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. If we walk in the light, now that's going to involve getting into the Word of God. They're kind of like they go together, don't they? Amen. Right. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins, not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Amen. You'll find, if you go back with me to Psalm chapter 119, the correlation here, Psalm 119. Now think with me just for, just for a second here. I can just about, if you were to do a, a chart of my life or do a chart of your life and when you're closest to God and when you're furthest away from God you'll find that there's a direct correlation to the Word of God. Amen. Oh brother Doug. No, if you're not careful you're gonna be like Samson. Amen. Now, what did Samson do after a while? He was God's man, was he not? Yeah, absolutely. Huh? But you get toying around with the blessings of God now think with me here. After a while, you become the strength of not God in your mind. You'll take care of things, not God. And Samson got up and shook himself, going to go out as he had every other day, and didn't even realize that God's hand of blessing was off his life. Samson? Yes, Samson. Yeah. It's kind of what happens to us, folks. Think with me here. You get away from God long enough... Uh, I toy around with this myself sometimes. Pray for me. I run into past blessings. Well, I'm saved. God, you have to bless me. Well, God can take his hand and set it over here for a while and say, fine. You just go at it yourself for a while. Psalm 119, if you look with me in verses 9 through 11. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. And boy, the heart is prone to wander. Amen. Folks, I need God's help staying close to him. I need God's help. I cannot do it of my own. I can make the effort, but I need to make that effort with the grace of God's help. 
With my whole heart have I sought thee, O let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. Has it been a while? Where are your affections at this morning? I can tell you where your affections at by where your thought process is. If God knew right now and could put it on the screen, that's probably where your affections are at. Brother Doug, you're preaching, not teaching. Oh, just bear with, amen? Right? Huh? Yes, it tell, listen, have a reality check. It's, 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 it's really okay, all right? But have that reality check with your Heavenly Father. Lord, show me, amen, if there be any wicked way in me. And help me to get it right with you. Where are your affections at this morning? We're speaking about spiritual mindset this morning. Mind of the things of the Spirit. Psalm 122, 1. Go up a couple chapters. Not only is when your affections are in the proper location on things above, not only does it affect how you view the Word of God, it affects your view of sin. But here's one. In Psalm 122.1, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Now you want a good check in your life spiritually, Christian, this morning, quit fooling yourself? How glad were you to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen? Amen. Amen. Right? Yep. By the grace of God, when the doors are open and I can be there, be there. Amen? It's not to be seen of man. Although we can be an encouragement to one another in that area. I need the preaching of the Word of God. I need the teaching of the Word of God. Oh, Brother Doug, you teach. No, no, I hope God's doing the teaching, but just because doesn't make me spiritual. Amen? I still need the power of God in my life. I still need the hand of God in my life. I need to be up at the house of the Lord when the doors are open by the grace of God. I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And look with me in Hebrews chapter 10. In verse number 25 of Hebrews 10, it says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. I'm going to say this carefully. I, I, I need more, not less. Amen. Amen. I need more, not less of the things of the Lord. Now you say, Brother Doug, it gets tedious. Folks, you have to appreciate what you have you have to pre appreciate each other, what you have in Christ, uh, what you have in the Word of God. And again, it's a matter of that affection. Do things get tedious sometimes? Yes. But the flesh is going to want to run the show after a while if you're not careful. Isn't it not? Right? Get into the Word of God. Spend some time with your Heavenly Father. Lord, help my attitude. Um, really help my attitude. Amen? In fact... Lord, if you could just do some cutting, as only you know how, with my attitude, please help me. Amen? Lord, help my attitude regarding the Word of God. I've read it several times, but there's no way. Do you think we're exhausting the book of Romans? Folks, we're just skirting it. We're just touching it. Amen? Yeah. You're still in Hebrews. It's going to affect how you see each other. Where your affections, if they're properly placed. It's going to affect how you see each other. Hebrews chapter 10 again, verse 24 says, Let us consider one another. What's it say there? Somebody read that. It's all right. It's okay. It's dead quiet. We'll hear your voice. Amen. Did anybody hear that? To provoke. <laughs> Got my attention. Gary, where are you? Amen? <laughs> Amen. Oh, we all woke up. Oh, I can provoke. Yeah, got a PhD in that. Listen, it says provoke unto love and to good works. It also doesn't say in verse 25, not forsaking the assembling ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. So we can provoke unto love. 
Amen. We can learn to exhort. Amen. We can learn to encourage. We can learn to be a blessing. Amen. Yes. It's not about ourselves. It's about the cause of Jesus Christ. If you like to provoke, there's a proper kind of provoking here. Amen. Romans 10.24. What you'll find here, if you go back to uh, Romans, Hebrews 10.24, Hebrews 3.13, back up to Hebrews 3.13. Hebrews 3.13 says, But exhort, but exhort one another daily, while well, it's called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Folks, I need some of that. I don't know about yourself. Um, it, it, I need exhortation. I need encouragement. I need a, sometimes a little bit of a... Amen? Uh, God's people are commanded to love each other. I know that's a, that's a strain, amen? But we are commanded to love one another. We're all part of a family. I know that's difficult too, right? But we are part of a family. And folks, if you can't get encouraged and exhorted at the house of the Lord, there's an issue, amen? I don't see a lot of you except on Sundays. I ought to have a kind word to say. I ought to have a word of encouragement. I ought to, I ought to, be, ought to be somebody that can be a blessing to folks. Amen? Amen? Right? Now let's transfer this outward. How about the lost out there? Amen? See, when your affections are properly placed, not only do I see you folks as an opportunity to be a blessing to, but then there's the lost. I can look at them as an annoyance. Eh, if they're going to get saved, they'll get saved. But look with me in Matthew chapter 9, if you would please. Matthew chapter 9. We're about out of time here, folks. Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9, verse 36. Matthew 9, 36. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them Amen. because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Amen. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. You want a good spiritual check this morning? It's what do you think about the unsaved that you run into contact throughout the week. How do you see them? As an annoyance? As a speed bump? As an issue? Or do you see them as opportunity? Where are your affections at this morning? And we're out of time, folks. I thought I would get further. Uh, let's stand. We'll be dismissed with a word of prayer. Time got away from me here a little bit. We'll have to come back to this, Lord willing, next week. Trust the lesson's been a blessing to you. Father, thank you for your word. Uh, thank you, Father, for Jesus Christ. Uh, Lord, where, uh, may you ask, uh, of trust you've asked each of us the question where our affections are at this morning. May they be on thee, Lord, heavenward. May your hand be on the service to follow. May Christ have the chief seat in all that's said and done. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you to know and do his will today. God bless you each for being here this morning.